which requires me to do some amount of pull so due to which I'm still a beginner and what I saw is that for beginners getting up to speed is something that uh, is not very much available for the occasional programmers like who, who are not into full-time Perl programming who do some amount of Perl, some database, uh, all of this kind of stuff. So uh, I had this idea about uh, having an IDE which would be a standalone platform, uh, multi-platform in fact and uh, which would be able to address all the initial needs for any person who would want to start up programming in Perl. That gave birth to Perl on NetBeans. Now, I have had these ideas when basically starting off uh, with an ID, like why do we need an ID? Now, the first person who comes into uh, our projects, like uh, we have multi-technology project wherein they come in and uh, they're like, okay, I need to do Perl, I need to do database, I need to do some amount of front end, some Java, this and that. So these are some of the features which were outlined initially that uh, would be integrated into the platform because these are some things which basically uh, necessitated why we should have an IDE. Now, apart from the fact we can do this manually as well, like error checking, you run it through the syntax checker and everything, you still do get all of these features individually. But when you package them in, inside into an application, uh, that becomes easier for any person who has zero background knowledge on Perl. And of course, like uh, once we are uh, I would say a medium level experience in Perl. We don't want to do all that manually. Now, these are some of the options that I explored while I was actually working with Perl and I was looking at having something which would make my experience uh, easier. Now, Vim Emacs, I know like, uh, sorry, the people here are very much tech savvy, everyone is an expert in Perl and I know like we would obviously anyone who's experienced in Perl would say that I would anyway go into the Vim and Emacs way. But that's not very easy when I felt started off with Perl. Now that became a bit difficult and that's why I moved out of Vim and Emacs. I thought okay this is something that might not be a very good option for the first time person. Uh, Epic is uh, the Perl plugin for Eclipse which came in. It also is a very good uh, option uh, provided the kind of facilities that it provides. But uh, setting up Epic was a very big pain for me. So I thought, yep, if I'm facing this problem, maybe others will also have that. Uh, Padre, yes, Padre is very good. No doubt it has all the options. It's like uh, everything's in Perl, in fact, for uh, Padre. Uh, but uh, there are too many fe features integrated and the first time person who doesn't need too many things at a time. Then we have NBPerl and OpenPerl ID. NBPerl is basically another initiative to integrate Perl into the NetBeans platform. Uh, and OpenPerl ID, which uh, personally I didn't prefer very much. And uh, this is, yes, of course, when uh, we work in multi-technologies, uh, multi uh, these are some of the things that uh, we do have. I, don't, I didn't start off with my career. When I started off, I didn't do only Perl. I did Perl. I did most of my uh, things in databases. I had Java, I had JavaScript, all of these, uh, these things uh, bundled together. So maybe only Perl was uh, not something that I was looking into. So I thought, have Perl plus have so within the same platform, I code Java, I code Perl, everything within the same interface. Uh, and if I want to create an ID or a uh, language platform like NetBeans or Eclipse, that's just plain crazy. We can't design lexes or parsers for each language by ourselves. That's like all of the things have already been designed. Why take the pain of doing that once more? This is Perl on NetBeans, the initial features. It's a cross-platform uh, built on uh, Java, uh, minimal requirements, GRE6. Uh, uh, it has uh, it's, uh, the native look and feel of uh, an applet app, so it looks the same in Windows, on Mac, or uh, Linux. Uh, this is available as a zip file on the Google Code web page. So you, no dependencies, no installations, nothing. Just download, unzip, and fire it. It works. 
uh, you just need Java and Perl, JRE, not the JDK, but the JRE and Perl to, uh, for this app to work. And it's portable since it's just, uh, you don't need to install it, it's just a zip file, plug it into a USB, put it anywhere, it still runs, provided the computer has a JRE and Perl installed. Now, these are the features that are currently supported. Uh, Perl files and modules, you can open them, edit them, run them. Syntax highlighting, this is when uh, I try to incorporate uh, the Perl Lexar, uh, Lexar in uh, AntLR. So this particular uh, implementation is developed on top of AntLR and I have a partially available uh, Perl grammar available for AntLR. Uh, it does automatic brace matching, uh, brace matchings, uh, project support, you can have Perl projects, new projects as well as uh, projects with existing Perl files. Uh, this particular feature might be required when you have an existing Perl repository and you just want to use this software to work on that repository. Uh, syntax checking, I can check the syntax, uh, execute the code, source code formatting. Uh, source code formatting is done using the Perl ID uh, module. Source code analysis, which is done by uh, Perl Critic, and it has uh, Perl doc integrated within the ID. So you just uh, right click on uh, the keyword, say Perl doc, and it gives you the Perl doc for that particular keyword. And it also has uh, source code uh, versioning, like uh, it can plug into your subversion, your JIT, and your Mercurial repositories. These are the features that I'm currently working on. We uh, in plan to incorporate a real-time error parser. Uh, the parser, I'm finding it really difficult to implement a parser in Antelar. It's not done yet, but it's currently in progress. Debugger. Uh, using the existing NetBeans platform debugger, I'm planning to integrate uh, the Perl debugger into, uh, inside the NetBeans platform debugger. Uh, regex simulator, yes, uh, Perl of course, Perl without regex doesn't make sense, so a regex simulator is also on the way. And uh, we do have a current user base uh, which are suggesting a lot of features. Those features are getting incorporated uh, as and when uh, time is available. Uh, one of the features that uh, is planned to be uh, incorporated very soon is the integration with the NetBeans uh, 8 platform. Currently, this is supported on NetBeans platform 7.2 and 7.4. Uh, currently, work is in progress for integrating this with NetBeans platform 8, which has a series of performance enhancements due to which uh, the ID works around two times faster than it what used to do on 7.2 as well as compared to on 7.4. This is the current usage stats since the project started. Uh, we have around uh, 31,000 plus hits on the web page. This is just for my publicity. And uh, the project is also hosted on Facebook. So this is where basically the user community interacts with us and uh, provides us with any kind of uh, feature requests that they have. So feel free to log on since everyone's on Facebook. And there is also a support page on Google. Please don't mind why the color is coming up like this. But it says Perl on NetBeans at googlegroups.com. That's the Google group. This is also an additional support page that we have. So if there are users who feel the need for any kind of features to be added, they request it here. And uh, we start working on that as per, again, time availability. So this is about the presentation. Let me just show you what actually it looks like. This is on 7.2. It's not migrated to 8 yet. So bear with me, please. So this is the startup screen 
once it opens up this is your home page and uh, the basic structure is that you have your Perl code arranged in the form of projects and within the projects there will be Perl files, module files. Currently only Perl files .pl and .pm are supported. So let's say we create some file and it says Perl, Perl project or Perl project with existing sources. I say Perl project, let's do a hello world. And it gives you the name of the project, the project location, the folder. I say yes. And it opens up this. Now, this is a template that's been designed. Uh, this is entirely NetBeans platform that has been used uh, for which like uh, whenever you uh, create a new file the shebang line and the strict pragma they are included by default because this is intended for beginners they don't need to do anything it's ready just code all we do is good old hello world okay now this is for the execute option, runs, this is your output, very simple. This is the code formatter. So it automatically reformats the code as per the Perl tidy standards. Now, this is what it does for beginners. Let's say at, you have been working for around a year or two, and now you want to set up the parameters for Perl tidy or Perl critic to use. Go to Tools, Option, Perl on NetBeans, have the Perl critic, and Perl tidy. So therein, these are the commonly used parameters that uh, are what I've seen with uh, uh, Tidy. If uh, there is any kind of uh, any more features that uh, anyone would like to see anything that they would uh, prefer uh, to have configurable within the Tidy module, uh, all feedback is welcome. We'll try to incorporate this uh, into this page so that those parameters can also be configured. So similarly for Perl critic, you can have like a Perl critic binary, you can specify the location of the binary, so directly it calls the Perl critic binary, and then with the levels of uh, criticism, depending on the levels of criticism, it goes against the code and finds out any kind of mistakes. Uh, also, a general tab, Perl executable. Now, any kind of uh, system when we're working on the default, we expect that Perl would be in the path. Now let's say uh, I have uh, Perl 5.0.8 on my machine which is in the path. I don't have options of, uh, like this is what I'm speaking about live scenario on my work computer. Uh, Perl 5.0.8, I'm unable to edit the path variable. I cannot have it anywhere, even in the user variables. So it's not even a, uh, I cannot just go and say Perl and it will go to Perl 5.0.8. 508. I want Perl 516 and I have the binary somewhere. I can point the binary to this. That way it will go against Perl 56, 516 rather than 508. So this is for any kind of uh, say custom Perl executable that you want to use. The library path, this is also any kind of uh, module files which are not there in the standard installation path. We still want to include them. We include those paths here and it will automatically go against those paths. And uh, let's see if this works. And I say code analysis. Still working. I hate 7.0. Okay. This is what the message comes at. So without the strict pragma, we get errors like this. See page four of the PPP. So these are two options. 
and I say Perl uh, print and this option here Perl doc help and I got Perl. I got the Perl doc for print what actually print does Now, let's say I don't want to run the code, but I want to check the syntax of the code before executing Perl dash C. It still says syntax okay. Something's wrong. <laughs> okay, and we have this option of uh, execution with uh, parameters. Uh, let's say my script expects some kind of parameters uh, to be passed on to the script. I can execute this. It will ask me for the command line parameters. We can pass on the parameters separated by spaces and uh, those would be passed on to the Perl script as ARGV1234. So this is a new project and uh, now when we select a project, we also get this option available which is add existing file. Let's say I have an existing file and I want to integrate that into a project. I say add existing file, select the file, put it into the project and I work on it. So anything else? I guess, yeah. Uh, any doubts, questions, feature requests? Yes, please. How many people besides yourself are involved in working on uh, Pro NFTs? Uh, currently, it's just me. Uh, this took around uh, four years to build uh, to the current state where it is. Uh, I didn't know Java, I didn't know Perl, I didn't know Antelar. So I learned some Java, I learned some Perl, I learned some uh, Antelar, and uh, this is what it is uh, right now. Yes, please. Do the NetBeans version numbers track the Java numbers? Is NetBeans 8 and Java 8? Uh, no, NetBeans is different from uh, Java. Uh, the JRE that you have with uh, NetBeans, like uh, NetBeans 7, it doesn't need to be JRE 7. And uh, this, this is on my machine, this is currently JRE 6 with NetBeans 7. Yes, please. Why didn't you have one as a plugin and set up the Friday? Yeah, the plugin is currently in progress. The plugin should be available for eight uh, within the next few weeks. Because this is uh, currently the largest raised question to me, why don't I have a plugin? Now, th another point is why don't I have a plugin is this is an ID with a lot of features that are inbuilt within the application. Now, if I put it as a plugin, then those features like a Perl Critic, Perl Tidy, they are embedded within the application. If I make it a module, then I have to separate out Perl Tidy, Perl Critic, or the Perl Docs, which are currently integrated. So those, again, increases my dependency list. Well, right now, I just depend on JRE and I depend on Perl. But the thing is that it, it would be good to eventually include stuff like uh, if running uh, Building catalog applications, uh, banter applications, and then uh, starting an NGI next session and connecting to it and Yeah, right. Uh, remote projects is something, remote projects is something which is also underway. Uh, first version of remote projects has been tested. There are some uh, issues there which have been identified, still working on that. For uh, Catalyst, uh, I haven't looked into Catalyst yet, but Dancer, yes, I'm working on Dancer as well. So Catalyst might be something that comes in later, but Dancer would come in first. And once debugging is resolved, then the remote debugging and the remote projects would also get resolved. So I guess this is it. Thank you everyone, thanks for coming.